Okay, let's look at some of the things we can do to affect gameplay using World Builder and other tools in Toolbench. As our first example, let's change the top speed of our character. So we go to the characters and we see player zero. We can double click on that to maximize them in our viewport. And over here in the entity editor, we see all of the properties that define that character, including position, rotation scale, um, is renderable, cast shadows. Here's what we're looking for, top speed. Now in World Builder, we can change this value here and have that communicate directly with, to the game to change it. But by changing it here, we're only changing it for this instance of this model. Perhaps top speed is mixed into other characters, the enemies in the game, the AI, and we want to change top speed on a more global level. Well, we can do that too by adjusting the definition of top speed using the NC modeling tool. So let's click view next to the model of the player to launch the entity modeling tool and here we'll see the player model. Don't worry that you can't read some of these things. We'll look at entity modeling tool a little more in just a moment. And we see in the mix in properties a very similar view to what you saw in World Builder. All of the properties for for the player including top speed and its default value of 900. So what does the value of 900 look like? Well, it's pretty good. There's a little bit of momentum to the character. When I stop moving, it takes him just a moment to slow down. It takes a little while to get started up. It's pretty good. But I wonder what 3000 would look like. So we change that value, click Save, and it's instantly updated in the game. And this is a little difficult to manage. It takes the character a long time to slow down and a little longer to start up. And it's probably too fast. So this is a value that we can iterate on very quickly and easily. We change it to 400. We try that, see what that's like. Well, that's too slow. We would fall asleep playing this game. Maybe 900 was a pretty good value, so we'll leave it at 900. Click Save. And now we're using that value in the game. Very fast, very easy to iterate on different parameter values. But what if we want to do something more complicated, like change the mix-in models to an entity or create brand new entities? What does that look like? Okay, let's learn more about the NC modeling tool. Let's close down Mangled Metal and let's maximize our view space so we have a little more real estate. And let's return to our our level to make a change to the first gate that we encountered in the game. Now if you remember, this gate was a collision activated gate. And here we see the sphere of influence around that gate. We call this a property visualizer. So it it's rendered only in the tool as opposed to in the game, which is good. And you know, here we see we can change the shape dimensions. You know, if we wanted to have a, a smaller collision sphere, we can just type that in, and we can see in the tool what that radius looks like, and it'll never be um, it'll never be rendered in the game. But let's make more of a change to this gate. Let's make it so it's not collision that opens it, but actually a touch source. So the character actually has to perform an action and swing the axe in order to open this gate. And we'll show how to do that with the uh, NC modeling tool. I'm also going to delete this enemy in front so we don't have to deal with that when we restart the game. Okay, here's the gate. Again, we we'll use view to launch the NC modeling project with that door selected. And we see what models are mixed in to define the door a collision trigger source, an animation response, so what causes it to open as a response, and a physics prop, which lets it use a physics trigger. Now one of the things included with Mangled Metal and Lightspeed is a nice trigger library that's it's reusable for all sorts of different prototyping needs. And you'll see that we can just mix in a touch source into this model, and I've changed what that model is. We'll take the the collision trigger source, remove that, and now my door is a, a very different thing. It no longer has a collision sphere that opens the door. I now need to touch the door in order to open it. Now before I leave the NC modeling project, let's see what it looks like to make some, some brand new entities. So I'll go over here to the Mangled Metal Entity project, and we'll say add a new model. I'm going to call it New Rock 1. And this is just going to be a rock we add to our world. So you'll see that we've created this new entity. It has no properties. It has no behaviors. This is a, a brand new baby in our environment, and it, it knows nothing but its name. So rather than rewrite a, a whole lot of properties and behaviors, let's just mix in some capabilities. So we'll take 
mangled metal mesh and mix that in. And now our new rock just inherited, if you will, NIF asset for it, the position, rotation, scale, is it renderable, all these things. We didn't have to write any new code, we just mix it in visually and we get all these capabilities. So let's pick an asset that we're going to use for this rock. Gamebryo data, some of the props. How about a prop rock large three? Great. There it is. We now have a new entity for our project and we can use World Builder to add that into the scene. But let's make one more thing before we do that. Let's make yet another new model, a new rock two. And we don't want to rewrite everything we just did, so we're going to mix in new rock one into there. And so now it's using the same graphical NIF asset, which was predefined for new rock one. But we also want this thing to be physically simulated. So let's mix in MM Physics prop into New Rock 2. And so now we have a physically simulated rock that we can add to the world. We save our empty modeling project, which again defines all the entities. We switch back to our world, and it will recognize that there's a new modeling project, and we say yes to use all of those new items. Now you see that there's no collision sphere around our gate anymore since we've changed that. And we have some rocks in our level. I'm going to delete these and we're going to add new ones. So we go to our palette view and we can filter our results. We can filter by new and I see new rock one and two. Let's add new rock one into the world and we'll add new rock two into the world. Let's multi-select those. We'll make sure we're in translation mode. We'll lift them up off the ground a little bit. We need to be in free placement mode so they can fly and are not snapping to terrain. Okay, those are our two new rocks. We'll save everything. And now let me shrink this window down some. And let's relaunch Mangled Metal. Okay, now let's see what's going on in our world. Now here are the two new rocks that I just placed. One is floating in the air and the other is down on the ground. That's because we placed both of them sort of hovering in the air, but one is physically simulated and fell to the ground due to gravity. And we can push this rock around and it'll fly around and we can even hit it with the axe and make it go flying off. Whereas the other is floating in the air. It is not physically simulated and it will stay in the air the entire time. Um, casting a nice shadow on the ground, but those are the two rocks that we defined entirely new empty models for. We didn't have to edit any code, we didn't have to recompile the game, and yet we've been able to substantially add to the content of the game. Now let's not forget our gate. Before it used to be collision response, so I'd just walk up to it and it would open. Now I walk up to it and nothing happens until I swing my axe. I've therefore touched the gate, and now I can move on into the next level of the game.